Welcome back everybody. Now today I've got three kitchen gadgets, all of them by request. So let's get started and see how they work. All right, for my first item, this is not a new product. This has been around for a long time, but for some reason it's not popular here in America, but I believe it's popular in other countries like France, and that is a butter crock. Someone wrote in and said, if you like the butter mill, which I raved about last year, you should try out a butter crock, which I did. I picked up one off Amazon, and here's how that went. Here's the butter bell crock. I paid $28.95 for this, so let's crack it open and see what it looks like. All right, there we, there we go. Now the claims with this product is that you, you can use water in the bottom of this side and it keeps an airtight seal and ensures longevity and keeps butter fresh and easily spreadable for weeks without refrigeration or spoilage. Prevents your butter from picking up odors from the fridge. Now a lot of people seem to love it saying it's nice to have fresh spreadable butter all the time. A few people on Amazon said it was a lot of work to change the water regularly while a few people had problems with the butter falling into the water. I'll have to clean this off and get started. All right, let's get started here now. I was looking over the instructions on the back of the packaging here. All right, step one, they say to pour approximately one third cup of cold water into the base. And that's, uh, that's what we got. For step two, they say to pack one stick of softened butter firmly into the bell-shaped lid. Here's the bell-shaped lid, and I've got some butter that's been uh, sitting out to room temperature, so it's softened. Someone on Amazon said they used a spoon to pack it in there, so I'm gonna use their technique, hopefully it works. They don't really specify the best packing technique. Okay, we want this firmly packed in there. All right, what's, I'm, Honestly, it looks pretty nice if I may say so myself. Now step three is to replace the lid and then you're pretty much ready to go. Now some people said the butter fell into the water. Hopefully that doesn't happen. It seems to be a minority, so I'm fingers crossed that it doesn't happen to me. But here we go. Well, you can't really see anything happening, but let me take a peek and see how it looks just after putting it in there. All right, well, the butter doesn't even look any wetter. Interesting. All right, let's see how it is to just use this on a first use here. I have a slice of bread. Okay, no, no butter fell in there, that's good. It's not really dripping, well, it's dripping a little bit. I'll just take a little bit of butter here, put it back in there. All right, it worked fine, now what we got here? Butter still looking good. I saw one use that seems okay, but I got a lot more to do on this. I'm gonna keep using this every day, we'll see how it works when it's becoming more empty, because I'm not sure, I mean, when it's full it seems fine. What happens when there's only a little bit left in there? Let's find out over time. All right, it's been three days. It's time to change the water and check the butter to make sure it's still intact. Here we go. And, all right, the butter is still intact. That's nice. I'm gonna dump out this water and change it out. But while I'm here, I'm gonna make myself a nice grilled cheese sandwich. Let's see how the butter looks. Oh, very nice. And it's nice and smooth. It does, it, it seems like it's working. Well, it is, it is nice, smooth butter, so I do like that. All right, well, it worked pretty well that time. I'm gonna keep using this for all of my butter necessities, and I'll check back when it gets closer to the bottom and see how it looks. All right, so the seven day mark, let me show you how it's held up. All right, so here we go. Now, as you can see, it's not plopped in the water. I've used most of the butter, and it's, it's held up quite well, but it's about time to refill it since I'm almost out. But overall, I've been very happy with this one. The next item that was requested, this came in from viewer Fran from Florida. She said she tried this appliance and she's had a lot of luck with it and thought I might enjoy it. It's a countertop omelet maker and here's how that went. All right, let's take, check out the Holstein Housewares two section omelet maker. I paid $24.94 for this. They say it makes two fluffy omelets in minutes. Can be also used for pizza pockets, apple turnovers, desserts and more. You can customize each side for individual tastes. Non-stick coating, stainless steel finish. It's a little bit smaller than I expected. Not, not necessarily a bad thing, but it is a little bit smaller than I thought it was gonna be. Um, looks like you got some recipes in here, that's nice. Let's take a look at this here. Now people on Amazon, a lot of people love the ease of use, the ability to make two omelets at once. A lot of people said the results are fluffy and evenly cooked. Some people who didn't like it, some people said the finished result doesn't look as good as a traditional omelet, while few complained about the size. All right, a few more observations. It does have this kind of nice cord wrap in the bottom here, which you can, uh, when you store it away, it's kind of nice. There are two LED lights in the top here. When you plug it in, they both go on. When the green light goes out, it's preheated. They only have recipes for omelets in here. I thought maybe they'd have some desserts or something like that. They don't. But I'm gonna start off with one of their recipes and I'm gonna do a recipe that Fran gave to me and see how hers works compared to theirs. So let's get started and see how it goes. Now I've already cleaned this off. Now one thing I gotta say is stainless steel, so 
I, I'm not big on the fingerprints, but that's kind of, when you want stainless steel, that's what you're gonna have to deal with. But I'm gonna go with their basic ham and cheese omelet recipe right here. So the first thing we have to do is beat four eggs. Half a cup of chopped ham. Half a cup of shredded cheese. Now the instructions say to spray the inside, even though it's nonstick, they say on the instructions to spray it with nonstick spray. Close the lid, plug it in and we have light. So once the green light goes out, which is actually, it's not quite green, it's kind of a orange color, but once that light goes out, we're ready to pour it in. All right, the light's just gone off, here we go. Now we're supposed to fill up both sides about equally, let's try it out. Whoa. All right, that's, that's pretty full. That is pretty full. Let's close it up. Now, their instructions say 10 to 12 minutes, but people on Amazon and Fran both said that's too long. So I'm going to check this after about six minutes and see where we stand. So let's come back in about six minutes and check on it. All right, we are at six and a half minutes. Let's see what we got. And, oh, they look pretty good. They're very, they're very fluffy. Oh, that's what I'm seeing. It looks pretty good. Let's get one of these out of here and take a, take a, t a look and a taste of it. The nonstick surface is working quite well. Yeah, I think these are done. 10 to 12 minutes, the instructions? I don't think so. That was six and a half. Fred was right about that. That was perfect timing. Here we go. Let's take a closer look at these. That's what we've got. I think that looks pretty good. Look, I guess the next thing to do now is take a, a taste of it. But just uh, on first glance, I'm kind of liking what I see. Well, here we go. Down the hatch. Well, that's pretty good. Another one. All right, so it came out light and fluffy. I'm very happy with it, but what I wanna do now is go right back into it and see how it works back to back going from one to the other. I'm gonna use Fran's recipe this time. She uses three eggs and not quite as much cheese, but let's see how that goes for test number two. And this does get hot, I must say. I must, it's very hot, it's very hot. All right, this is Fran's recipe. A tablespoon of cheese, three eggs, and some bacon bits. I kinda of went heavy on the bacon because it sounded good to me. I'm gonna divide it between the two wells here. That looks pretty even. Close it up, six minutes and let's check it out. All right, six and a half minutes, let's check it out. And, oh, they look nice and fluffy. A little bit of golden brown on top, they look pretty good. Let's get one out of there and take a look. Here's the, uh, the final product, looking pretty good. Let me uh, cut one of these open. How about the other side? There's the bottom, looks nice. There's the bottom, looks nice. Let's cut one of these open and check it out. I see a little bit of a little bit of gooey cheese in there. I gotta see the bacon. Here we go. Let's try Fran's recipe. Taste-wise, it's absolutely perfect. I will agree with one of the commenters that said that it doesn't really look like an omelet that you would make yourself the traditional way, but taste-wise, it's very good. It's not dried out. The cheese is nicely melted. Everything seems perfect. Nothing's burnt. So I think it did a great job. Some people on Amazon said they used it for pancakes, so I put some pancake batter in there and I tried it out. I, the final result was kind of somewhere in between a waffle and a pancake, but it, but it was cooked. It might take some trial and error to get it right for you, but you can use it for things besides just omelets. For my final item, someone last year noticed that I was using a kettle on my stove and they said, you gotta try an electric kettle. So I picked up a popular model on Amazon that was under 30 bucks and here's how that went. All right, here is the Mueller Ultra Kettle. I paid $29.97 for this. It's nice looking. Here's the base. All right, so the claims that it's got a 1.8 liter capacity, built-in LED lights, made of high quality glass and stainless steel, auto shut off, boil dry protection, anti-slip handle. On Amazon, it's pretty popular, 4.7 stars among over 55,000 reviews. People say it's well built, lasts for years, simple to use, and boils water quickly. Not a lot of complaints about it. I did see a few people say the lid would stick. Others said it did not hold up over time. Let's uh, clean this out and get started. To open it up, you just press this button on top here. Very cool. All right, I fill it to the max fill line. Place it on the base. All right, so I'll just plug it in. Turn it on at the handle right here. Oh, it looks nice. Look at those LEDs, very nice. Hit the stopwatch and we'll see how long it takes. I'm already seeing activity in there for 30 seconds. We're already getting some action down at the bottom in under a minute. Very cool. I also like those LED lights, they look kind of nice. Now supposedly it shuts off on its own as soon as it starts to boil, so we shall see about that. At the three minute mark, we're getting close. I can already tell. Oh yeah, it's pretty warm. All the way through, it's warm. But the handle doesn't look too warm. 
And it doesn't look warm at all. Looks like right around six minutes, we oh, we got it. We got it right here. Here it goes. It's gonna turn off any second now, I think. Oh, look at that. Whoa. Very cool. There it goes, boom. Okay, turned off at six minutes and 15 seconds. And that's 1.8 liters, which is not a small amount of water to boil. Let me see the handle here. Handle is not hot. Handle is not hot. All right, this supposedly has a boil dry prote protection feature where if you turn it on without water in there, it'll automatically shut back off. Let's test that out. I'm gonna turn this switch on right now. And hopefully I don't break it. And... Uh... <laughs> There we go. Okay. It worked. It worked. It only was on for a few seconds. That's great. All right. Although it was still hissing at me because I didn't like that. I'm going to see how this compares to a regular old kettle here on the stove. I'm going to turn this on high. I'm going to turn this on and see which one goes first. Each of them have a liter and a half of cold tap water. Let's get started. Turning the stove on. Turning the kettle on and we're off. I'll check back when something happens. At the about around the one minute mark, I'm starting to hear something from the Mueller already. So let's... Uh, See how it goes for the kettle, which hasn't made any noise yet, but I'm still looking out for it. All right, the Mueller is definitely making some noise already. I'm hearing something. We've got heat over here, but nothing yet in the kettle. All right, at the three and a half minute mark, the Mueller looks like it's getting close to being done here. And the kettle itself is actually starting to make some noise over there. So we've got a competition now. I really don't know who's going to win. It's getting close. The tension mounts. The Mueller, I got, it's starting to, to roll here. It's starting to, it's getting close. It's got to be almost done. But I'm hearing a lot of activity over here on the kettle too. Oh, 450. 450 for the Mueller and the tea kettle is still going. The kettle at 815. All right, so it was significantly faster. It was like almost four minutes faster. So uh, the Mueller did win the competition pretty handily actually. It sounded like it might have been closer, but uh, it was not close at all. The Mueller won easily. So in the end, I'm pretty happy with all three of these kitchen gadgets. I want to thank everyone who recommended me trying them. Usually when I do a kitchen gadget video, there's at least one clinker in the bunch, but I think I went three and zero on this one. All three of these worked out great. But if you've tried any of these kitchen gadgets, tell us what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.